Joe Rogan shared his workout routine in this video. And honestly, it sounds insane. So with this video, I'm gonna react to it, give you my opinions, and then in a future video, I'm going to do his workout most definitely exactly the way he prescribed. But before we get started, we help busy over 40s get in shape with only 30 minutes of kettlebell training per week in the next six weeks. If you wanna find out more about our method, check the first link in the description and download our free ebook called The Kettlebell Code. Grüezi Vetran, Gregory von Leberstag here. Let's waste no time and jump right into Joe Rogan's workout routine and his ideas about training in general. Pinned. On the, pinned on one. Pinned, I remember we I all don't, had... I don't bench press. And when I did, I was like, this is like really stupid. But we were drunk. I love the bench press. There's nothing quite like lowering a bar to your chest and getting that feeling that you're almost getting crushed. Even if you become fairly advanced and use heavy weights with the bench, I think that feeling always remains. And it's unique to the bench. When it comes to building a strong upper body, I think the bench press is number one. All I do is kettlebells. The heaviest weight I do is 70 pounds. Hey, would you ever think about posting when you program for your workout? I would love to know what you do. Did you ever post it's it real on Instagram? Simple. Do you do I circuits? Say, yeah. Yeah, I do circuits. But um, I think there's a real value to doing a, like, there's a bunch of exercises that are standards. Like uh, straight leg deadlifts. Uh, clean yes. and press. A 70 pound kettlebell translates into a 32 kg. Even if you're fairly advanced with kettlebells, the 32 kg still remains a beast. So let's look at the standards Joe was talking about. I believe there's eight of them. The deadlift, the row, the lunge, the goblet squats, the press, the swing, the clean and press, or clean and jerk, and the snatch. These are the most bang for your buck kettlebell exercises that you can do. So I recommend you to learn them ASAP. Three minutes, 34 degrees. Boom, go from there. 20 body weight squats, 20 push ups, 20 body weight squats, 20 push ups. You do two sets in a row so that you get two sets of legs, two sets of push ups, you get so that you get warm up. Yeah. Then you do the, the final three. You get to 100 push-ups, 100 bodyweight squats. So Joe does a total of 100 push-ups and 100 bodyweight squats. That's what I will call an extended part of your warm-up routine for a pro. For a beginner, this is a workout in and all by itself. And probably a little bit too much. I would always consider adding a solid mobility routine to your warm-up. Lubricating the joints, getting ready to train, without putting your body straight into an exit of homeostasis. 70 pounds, 10 swings each arm, three sets, 10 presses each arm, three sets, 10 windmills each arm, three sets, 10 renegade rows. All right, let's break this down. Exercise number one, the single hand swing, 10 reps with each arm for three sets. This equals 60 reps total. Exercise number two, the press for 10 reps with each arm, again, with three sets. Again, this equals 60 reps. Exercise number three, the windmill with the same protocol. And exercise number four, the renegade row, again, with the same protocol. My initial reaction is the swing. Sounds absolutely solid, 100%. You can do this with a 32 kg with a very good pace if you are advanced. With the press, there's a cross row from my perspective. If Joe was able to strict press 10 reps with each arm for three sets, be 60 reps, then this guy is a walking house. I believe what he's rather using is a push press or a jerk because strict pressing a 32 kg requires lots of upper body strength. Then comes the windmill. With a 32 kg, yes, it's heavy, but if you have a solid hand insertion and a solid technique and a good position, Overhead and the top fixation, it is most definitely doable. The final exercise, the renegade row, I'm assuming he's using two 32s because this is the only way how I can imagine that you can do a proper renegade row. If you only use one kettlebell, the range of motion is way too small. So the torque sled, pushing it, you're pushing it about 35 meters and then you're pushing it and you're pulling it back. And we do that, we'll do that for three sets. I'm a big fan of the Prowler. We use it almost on a daily 
basis. So three sets of 35 meters, let's just say he's using a 100 meter race track. And we have 10 meters in our gym, so that would be 10 rounds. And this sounds absolutely solid. I love this. I also load the Prowler fairly heavy. And I believe it's one of those low skill exercises. Everybody, even the most deconditioned person can push and pull a Prowler and get lots of benefits out of it. We go from there to Tabatas on the heavy bag. Tabatas are 20 second sprint followed by 10 second rest. Tabata sprints are intense. And the way I would translate it is into burpees if you're not into running or sprinting. So 20 seconds of fast one pump burpees and then 10 seconds of rest. And even if you're good at burpees, this sounds like a solid challenge. End of the workout, you quit. No, The Rock is fucking, he was cool, man. He's <laughs> humble. He, he didn't, he's not a kettlebell guy and he had never done cold plunge before, before he did it with us. What? Yeah, never done it. So he is super humble. He was, he, he, there was no, guys built like a fucking superhero, right? But I think he's also doing a lot of stuff to increase like the aesthetics. Yeah, you the know, mass. so he's doing yeah, a lot yeah. of machines. If you look at his uh, Iron Paradise, that insane gym he has set up. Yes. By the way, American flag, fucking prominently displayed. When you look at that setup, that setup is a setup. It's perfect for a guy who wants to look like a superhero in a movie. It's perfect. Yeah. But I'm concerned with like functional strength. I'm concerned with like I want to be able to move my body like an athlete yeah. as long as I can. I love the fact that Joe is mentioning functional strength or how I'd like to call it practical training or practical strength. See, if you're only using machines, you are gravitating towards the bodybuilder aesthetic superhero look. I wholeheartedly agree with Joe because machines offer themselves well to maximize hypertrophy and building big gym muscles. But from a movement standpoint, a clean and press involves your whole body as opposed to a leg press or just a chest press seated on a machine. Because with a clean and press with one kettlebell, it's the unilateral aspect, so rotation comes into play. You pull, you push, you hinge, you carry the weight on your frame. It requires skill, it requires coordination, it requires proper breathing. And this is why we call this type of training, training rather practical or functional. You know, but I've been doing that whole routine for so long that my body is like just fucking primed for you it. Pretty much I wholeheartedly understand where Joe is coming from. I have that same feeling. If you've been doing a workout routine for a longer time, it's ingrained in your spirit. You're looking forward to it, especially if you enjoy it. Now, there's a case to be made for workouts that we should do that we don't really like to do. Because often workouts that we don't enjoy doing are those type of trainings that train our weakest link in the chain. However, the other side of the argument is that if you constantly do a workout you don't enjoy, you probably don't stick with it for long unless you are a high caliber elite athlete. Because a common denominator of being successful with your workout routine so that it fits into your busy life is a training schedule that you love doing. In closing, I want you to keep an eye on this channel because I'm going to do Joe Rogan's workout, I'm going to film it, and I'm gonna put it on the channel as a follow Along. So here's the next thing that you have to do. Clean it, press that like and subscribe button. Share with a friend who's also interested in kettlebells. And if you made it this far, download our free ebook called The Kettlebell Code in the first link in the description. If you're over 40, 50, or 60, you don't have a lot of time. And you've probably spent time at a gym trying to get in shape, but it didn't happen. No results. This is where the kettlebell comes in. In. It builds muscle, it burns fat, it builds strength, it is awesome to train with, it rebuilds the elastic component of our bodies, which means it might be a good solution against back pain. So if you want to get started with kettlebells, download the free ebook in the first link in the description called The Kettlebell Code.